Now at 11, Fred Meyer workers are calling for shoppers to boycott the store. We'll break down what each side is saying about allegations over a gender wage gap. And we're hearing from the father of the teenage girl who police say was almost kidnapped from a store in the Vancouver Mall, but the suspect was convicted of doing just four years ago. Plus, I think it's kind of ridiculous. It, it, Makes sense. This story over urinals is really heating up online. The divided opinions on gender neutral bathrooms in downtown Portland. The news at 11 starts now. This is KGW News at 11. Calls to boycott Fred Meyer today coming from the union representing grocery workers in our region. This comes after they authorized a strike a couple of weeks ago. For months, the union has been trying to negotiate higher pay and close what they call a gender pay gap with regional supermarkets. UFCW Local 555 says Fred Meyer started committing unfair labor practices and coercing employees. They were calling members into these one-on-one -on -one meetings called captive audience meetings and harassing them, telling them they were worthless, telling them they could be replaced by someone off the street, um, trying to coerce them to leave the union, just a bunch of scare tactics and intimidation tactics. Fred Meyer says those allegations are completely untrue and misleading and the company wouldn't stand for any type of coercion. So let's bring in investigative reporter Morgan Romero. You're here to catch us up on really the battle that's being waged mm -hmm. at the supermarket. And it's really interesting case because a lot of Fred Meyer employees, they don't have contracts right now. Yeah, yeah, it's wild, Brittany. And you mentioned earlier, once Fred or once the union authorized that strike, they kept working with Fred Meyer to increase wages to make things more fair. But Fred Meyer, they weren't meeting them halfway. So the union went ahead and they canceled one department's contract extension. And then they said that's when Fred Meyer retaliated and they started treating employees unfairly. So they went ahead and they canceled all contract extensions for the majority of the departments. And that's for 57 stores in Southwest Washington and Oregon in most departments. Hence the boycott that right. we're experiencing right now. So we've been following this story for really quite mm -hmm. some time and it's really raising a lot of questions online, especially social media. Yeah. One in particular, why is there even a wage gap in the first place? Because isn't it the unions that really negotiate these wages? Right, it's pretty historical and we'll get to that in just a moment. But I do wanna be clear, men, data shows men do make more than women in Fred Meyer's stores, but it's not that women are making less doing the same exact job in the same department for the same amount of time. UFCW Local 555 commissioned an outside agency to dig into this. Here's what they found. In the grocery contract at Fred Meyer, there are Schedule A and Schedule B jobs with different wage scales. A makes more than B. There are mostly men in Schedule A, while women are more likely to work in lower paying Schedule B jobs. That is driving a gender pay gap. Historically, women have worked in Schedule B departments and those jobs have always been paid less. Schedule A departments include grocery, produce, cold wall, wall deli, and beer, wine, and liquor departments. They make $17.20 an hour. Schedule B jobs include bakery, deli, cheese, coffee shop, and e-commerce they make $13.50 an hour. This study found workers in both schedules stock shelves, prepare food, and give customer service. So the union argues they all have their own unique challenges and should be paid about the same. I think what happened was that two-tiered wage schedule just sort of stayed in place for a while. Um, and then what we have, the reason that we think we're seeing women being pushed into those Schedule B jobs is just a long-term perception, sort of the collective unconscious of what constitutes women's work versus men's work. And that's just not true anymore. Um, and the reason that we've never brought it up before is we never had documentation until this contract cycle. More research needs to be done on the why. Is it that women are more drawn to jobs in the deli or bakery versus men? Does management funnel them into those paths? Do these jobs pay less because they're majority women? The union thinks yes to the last two. Overall, the biggest factor in the gap is the disproportionate number of women in lower paying Schedule B departments. 
So obviously a much more complicated issue than yeah. it appears from the outside. So has Fred Meyer responded to the calls for boycott? Yeah, so they responded, you know, a few weeks back when they authorized that strike and then they responded again today saying basically the same thing. They said there is no wage gap. It's an unfair, unjust accusation. But they also said in regards to the boycott, they believe that it's unfair to employees, to their families, to communities and to customers. And it actually gives their non-union competitors a leg up. We don't funnel people into certain job types based on their gender. Rather, we um, uh, we, we encourage all applicants to apply for jobs that appeal best to them and their lifestyle so they'll hopefully love their work and stay with the company. The, the tiers that are in place, the matrix that, in place, uh, that is in place is what was negotiated for union members by the union. Again, to reiterate, as we mentioned earlier, the union does negotiate those wages and they negotiate wage scales. Today, Fred Meyer took out this ad in the Oregonian explaining their side. Temple, meanwhile, says Freddie's proposed increasing wages and offers great benefits and pension. Meanwhile, the union also represents workers at QFC, Safeway and Albertson stores in Oregon and Southwest Washington. They'll all be back at the bargaining table later this week. Brittany. Thank you so much, Morgan. And Morgan did pose the question on social media, and we've been getting a ton of responses asking, are you planning to boycott Fred Meyer? And we are seeing a lot of differing answers, some simple yes or no answers. A lot of people saying, no, they'll not cross the picket line because hashtag union strong. Some other people saying no, but for reasons that might surprise you, those reasons being it's the only affordable option that they have for groceries in the area and others simply saying it isn't their fight. And you still have time to weigh in. We want you to we want to know, are you going to support the union's call to boycott Fred Meyer or will you continue to shop there right now? More people say that they will stop shopping there, but you can still weigh in. Head it over to KGW.com slash vote or click vote on the KGW mobile app. Well, we're now hearing from the father of the teenage girl who police say was nearly kidnapped at the Vancouver Mall. It happened last night around five. Police say Stephen Hayes approached the 14 year old at the store, grabbed her and threatened to kill her. They say he tried to drag her out of the store, but she fought back and ran off. Bystanders luckily chased Hayes and held him until police arrived. The victim's father posted on Facebook after the incident, calling it a nightmare and thanking those who helped her. He tells us he'll be at Hayes court appearance tomorrow and will make another statement then. Police do say that Hayes has been convicted of kidnapping before. This wasn't his first time. In 2015, we reported that he tried to kidnap a young girl at a Vancouver Walmart. Police say she got away and he was arrested after running from the store. According to the Colombian, in that case, he was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Well, it is the last day of summer, and I don't think I'm alone in saying this. It feels like fall is already here and has been for a while. It's pretty wet outside today, so let's bring in meteorologist Joe Ranieri. He's here with a look at what the first day of autumn is going to bring us. Joe, but we've been saying it. It kind of feels like fall already. It really does. I went home for a break uh, for uh, dinner tonight, and my wife already decorated the house with uh, the fall colors. <laughs> and we had soup. It was awesome, and it's going to be like that the next couple of days. I know this is the time of the... Uh, the summer, well, early fall, I should say, or about to say, where you'll be start to see some warm conditions and it's generally pretty nice. That is not going to be the case over the next couple of days. We are done with the shower, so tomorrow morning is going to be bone dry, but there will be some patchy areas of fog. Of course, it was a decent uh, end to summer just a couple of hours ago. Now those showers have kind of uh, moved off over the mountain passes and into eastern Oregon. We saw about a tenth of an inch of rain for today. So as we look at the weather headlines, fall arrives early tomorrow, Monday, 12 50 tomorrow morning. Patchy areas of fog to start things off on your Monday morning and much cooler late this week. Daytime highs will be right around the low 60s toward Friday. Now by tomorrow though, we'll be waking up to some low clouds, but I'm expecting to see those clouds really burn off by the later part of the morning. We'll be at 62 degrees by midday on our way to a high of 68 degrees. There'll be a little bit more of the sunshine south of the metro area. Just give it a little bit of time. There will be a little bit of some blue skies above the city uh, by the uh, early part of the afternoon as we go into the early tomorrow morning. Still some lingering showers on this model, but for the most part, we are going to be seeing some dry conditions. I am tracking more showers, though, that arrive over the next couple of days. Details not coming up.
I am loving that sweater weather, though. Yeah, right. no kidding. <laughs> Thanks so much, Joe. Well, two fishermen are now safe after the Coast Guard rescued them from a jetty in Coos Bay. Crews say their rudder failed and their boat ran into the rocks. The men sent out a distress call around one this morning. Crews say both people on the boat jumped into the water and climbed onto the jetty. The helicopter did airlift them to safety. One man had some cuts and scrapes, but the other was not hurt. Let's try this one more time. Hey, Sparky. Come almost on, buddy. Late. You almost got this. Yeah, just amazing to see that little prancer dance away. It's another rescue, this time involving a deer that got stuck in a water treatment plant tank. It happened in St. Helens this morning. Firefighters tied some planks of wood to a ladder and lowered it into the tank. With some encouragement, they got the deer to climb out. Crews say they don't think the deer was hurt and say it seemed very grateful as it ran off. It does. It looks very thankful for those firefighters out there. I love that. Well, now to a strange topic. Urinals. What do you think about gender neutral bathrooms? That's coming up next.